My name is Poor Nielsen with Random Attack, and today we're going to be looking at the bevel tool or bev bevel modifier found with inside Blender. Now, what exactly is bevel? Well, it takes an object and along the edges, it adds extra loops to give it a beveled look, like you see right here. So let's go ahead and talk about all the different options here, and then later we're going to talk about the uses of why you'd ever want to use bevel if you don't see it. It's made pretty clear as you look at this. So let's look at the first thing, width. This is the amount of bevel you have. So the smaller the width, the, the less pronounced the bevel. The bigger the width, the, the bigger the bevel. Segments. Basically, this is how many edge loops there's going to be inside the bevel. Profile gives you, is this going to be an indented or outdented bevel? 0.5 gives you your typical one that you want. But if you change this to one, you can see it becomes no bevel. If you change it to zero, you can see the bevel as actually going inside. As long as you have more than one segment, the profile actually affects it. If there's only one segment, it's not going to do anything. And then material. This one is an interesting one. It assigns a different material to the bevel based on the index. So let's go ahead and create two materials. Let's create a default white one. And let's go ahead and create a default red one like this. Now if I go to material, I can scrub through this and get the materials that I want. If you have more than one material, you can change that as well. Leading to a lot of different options in animation if you want that, or vis visualization. Now we can go up to the other options we have right here. You have only vertices. Now this does what you would think it does. It doesn't bevel along the edges, rather it bevels along the vertices. Clamped overlap. This option is one of the most important, in my opinion. What this does is it automatically makes it so that none of the bevels can overlap, or at least it tries to do this. So we'll play around with this a little bit. Let's go ahead and extrude this. Extrude this just into kind of some interesting shapes that we can look at this. And that should do it. Now, if I turn this off and crank up the, um, the width, you can see that it's it's overlapping but if i turn this on you can see auto automatically it clamps it back so that none of the none of the bevels is going to be so big that they overlap let's go ahead and extrude one face slowly and you can see how it's small at start but as i get it bigger the clamp increases in size all right now we also have loop slide you're not going to be able to use loop slide unless part of the object is beveled and the other part is not. If there's an unbeveled edge along with a beveled edge, what loop slide does is it tries to slide along the edges if possible. Um, turning this option off can lead to more even, uh, more even bevel widths. So typically I like to keep this off. You can play around with it. If you're not getting the results you want, and you have beveled and unbeveled working together, go ahead and play with this and see if it fixes the, the issues. The next one is the limit methods. So we have several different limit methods that we can use. We have none, right? Which basically all the edges are gonna be beveled. You have angle, which we can change what angle is going to be beveled. So anything um, greater than this angle is going to be beveled. Anything less than this angle is not going to be beveled. You have weight. Now, if you go ahead and tab into edit mode, you can select a few edges like this. Hit control E because that's the edge options. And then you can change the, the bevel weight of the different edges, giving you some control. So even within a single thing, I can add different bevel weights and you can see how that affects it. The last one is vertex group. Much like bevel weight, I can go ahead and tab into edit mode and select a few vertices, create a new vertex group right there, and then select some other vertices, create another group. Go ahead and go back, and now you can see as I change the different groups, it'll bevel that group specifically, giving you even more um, control over what is or what isn't going to be beveled. The last is going to be the width method. So there's four different width methods. Let's talk about percent first. So percent is the amount um, or the percentage of the adjacent edge lengths. So for example, if I change this to 50, 
it's going to be 50% um, of the edge is going to be beveled. So 50 is going to give you almost 100% bevel because the two 50% meet in the middle right there. Uh, changing this percentage down to like 25%, you can see it's a 25% bevel and so on. Offset is what we typically have been using. And so it's just the offset from the original. The width is going to be blender units. So if you change that to like 0.2, that's going to be 0.2 blender units. And the last one is a very strange one. I don't really use this one very much. Um, it has its uses, but not a whole lot that I've found for my pr particular workflow. It is the amount perpendicular distance from the original edge, so this edge right here, to the beveled face. That's what depth is. So <laughs> you can play around with it, see if you need it, see if you don't need it. I don't use that very much. So that is the bevel modifier. You now know all the different options that it does, and you can kind of see, oh, I might use it for this or that or whatever. The biggest use I like to use is when I'm hard surface modeling and I have all these hard edges that don't look realistic. I add a bevel and it just gives you that nice little smooth kind of a subtle roundedness to the edges that make it look more realistic. If you look at anything in real life, nothing has a perfect 90 degree edge. Nothing comes to, you know, a single atom um, juncture <laughs> That's that, that would be found within no bevel. I, I guess there might be that obsidian that you they use in like surgical blades might have like an atom thickness or something crazy like that. But besides that, you're never going to have a perfect square that's perfectly um, flat like this. That's when I use bevel. Now you can use it for a lot of different options too, to soften a shape, to try and get geometry that doesn't exist. But that is the biggest use that I've found for it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped. I hope that you now understand bevels a little bit more. Feel free to uh, give us a thumbs up if you like it and leave comments below. How do you how do you use bevels? Is there anything cool that you have found that this video doesn't talk about? Um, also consider following us on social media. We have a Twitter account and a Facebook account and a Patreon account that offers some goodies if you subscribe to that as well. Thank you so much for your time. Have an awesome day.